Hi folks, it's Philip Andrews from the Elements team and welcome to this quick introduction to the great new features inside Photoshop Elements 11. First of all, you'll notice that we've got a great new look to the program and it starts right at the welcome screen. You can see here we have still the two main workspaces, the organizer and the editor. Let's jump through to the organizer space to start with and you'll notice immediately that the interface is a lot more modern and a lot cleaner. We have an actions bar at the bottom we have four main workspaces at the top here when we're looking at displaying media, displaying our assets associated with people or places or events. We have a create drop down panel here and a share drop down panel here and there's three clear sections to the workspace. On the left hand side we have our import button with all of the places that you'll be grabbing your images from including Adobe Revel. And then we have our albums and the folders that we actually import our images from. In the center is our normal workspace, including all of the thumbnails associated with your pictures. Don't forget the All Media button here, because this will display all of the images and all of the resources in your catalog. And over on the right hand side, we have our tags and also information about specific images. Let's grab one of these images and drop down to the editor space now. And it too has a new look and a new feel. We have the three different workspaces that you're probably used to from previous versions of the program. Down at the bottom we've got an action bar which has quick links to things like the organizer and the photo bin which is being displayed at the moment. But along with a new way of looking, we also have some fantastic new features as well. Let's look at each of these in turn. There's great new options in the organizer space, like the ability to sort your images according to the people in them, the places they were taken at, or the events that they celebrate. It's very easy to add your images to these different categories using the options in the actions bar at the bottom of the screen. And once you've added your images to these options, then we just select that option and you'll see a subset of your assets based around the pictures associated with, in this case, a particular person. Or if we go to places and then select the map option at the bottom of the screen, we can see a list of the different places where we've got images associated with them and we can display the images based on their location. So if I select one of these entries, you'll see just the images associated with that entry. Better still, we can go to the map option and we can click on the map pin and click show media to show the images that we've taken at that location. Events are similar in that we group our images based on a particular date or a particular event. These are three great ways of organizing and managing your ever-growing library of photos. Version 11 of Photoshop Elements also makes it much easier for you to get your images out to your friends and family and online. Let's select this image here and just go up to the share pane in the top right hand corner of the organizer workspace and you'll see all of the options that we have here for doing just that. Most of you will have your own Facebook accounts or even Flickr accounts or SmugMug and you can easily get your images to any of these online sharing websites using these options here. Let's have a quick look at the Facebook one. Click on Facebook. We authorize Facebook to use our Facebook account. Once that's done, we return back to Photoshop Elements and just click Complete Authorization. Then we can add in some details. Once we've adjusted those settings, we just click Upload to transfer our files up to our Facebook page. When completed, we can just click this link to see the image on their Facebook page. And we have some great new options in the guided edit workspace. If we look under photo effects and select in this case high key as one of our new options, we can convert this image that you see here into a high key black and white. Simply click our way through the options in the panel of the guided edit workspace and we'll end up with something that retains detail but also has a high key graphic look to it. Let's look at before and after. We have another option as well and that's low key. So let's select a different image this time and we'll go click on the low key entry in the same guided edit panel. We'll go for black and white again and immediately you'll see quite a dramatic change. But with the low key effect we can select the reduce effect option and use a brush to brush back the effect and regain some detail in certain parts of the image. So very quickly and very easily we've gone from what is a strong portrait to a very striking and dramatic portrait. But these aren't the only new effects available in the guided edit workspace. 
Also keep your eye out for tilt shift and vignette effect and let's have a quick look at how these work. Here we're going to select tilt shift, add in a tilt shift effect which is like a blurring effect to the image with one part of the photo remaining sharp. Then we can modify the focus area by just clicking and dragging across the area that we want to retain sharp. Maybe down this street or maybe down this person or just across on an angle like this. Then we can refine the effect even further by adjusting these slider controls. You'll see that we can increase the blur, change the contrast of the blurred areas and even change the saturation of those blurred areas as well. Once we're happy with that we can just click done. Now let's go and have a look at the vignette effect. We'll add in a black vignette and we'll change the intensity of the vignette and then we'll change the shape. We can adjust the feather making it softer and the roundness as well and then just click OK. Now I'm going to click done and we'll just look at before and after. So you can see that very quickly and very easily we can create a very different look and style to our images using these new guided edit effects. There's also a new version of Camera Raw featuring the 2012 Camera Raw engine. This is the most advanced raw editing engine that Adobe has produced and Photoshop Elements users get to use this editing engine with their raw files. There's also new ways to adjust the tones in your image and you can see the different slider controls that we have inside the main panel. As always, after making your adjustments in the Camera Raw workspace, you just click Open Image to bring that file into Photoshop Elements. If we go to the Expert Editing mode now, let's look at some of the other features we have inside this workspace. For instance, we can go up to Window now and then just down to Actions to see a full Actions panel that we can apply to our photos. Let's select the sepia tone and with grain here and just press play. Automatically the actions are applied to our image. You can see we've got a fantastically styled image very quickly and very easily. But if we click on the menu in the top of the actions panel, you'll also see that we can load actions. And this is new for Photoshop Elements 11. This means that you can add to your actions collection with actions that you download from trusted and respected authors and action producers around the world. Other options in the Editor Workspace include three new filters that we can play with. If we go up to the Filter menu and then down to Sketch and across to Comic, you'll see a brand new workspace here and we can apply a very graphical kind of filtration to the image, providing black edges and strong colours to produce an illustration that looks like it was part of a comic book. Also in that same filter menu, so down to sketch, we have another option called graphic novel. Again it's along the same lines as the comic, but here we can isolate sharp edges, we can do very graphical effects like this, add in some fine detail, and all the time change things like the darkness of the line that outlines the different parts of our image. And the final filter that we've got for you to play with is the pen and ink filter. So again we go down to sketch and then just down to pen and ink. Along the same lines but this time with some colour associated with it as well. So let's add up the contrast, increase the width of the ink and some detail. And then we can change the hue that's being applied to the final result. There's presets here that you can play with as well and then you can fine tune your results with the other options available in the panel. So there's just a few of our favourite features in this Photoshop Elements 11 release. There's plenty more for you to play with which we haven't had time to demonstrate here. Get your copy now and see which ones you like the best.